Hello and welcome. Part 2 of this solution. In first part we have already prepared the job sequencing schedule showing us the preference order D, A, C, F, E, B. The special point in this case is each and every rather information regarding the number of units to be manufactured in each and every job is also available. Normally this uh, in this chapter job sequencing no information about the number of units is given but in this case this can be treated as a special point. Now we are going to prepare the statement showing minimum total time elapsed dead idle time and for that we have to follow this order first job D its first unit will be on machine 1 at 0 time timing is 0 and each and every unit requires 4 hours on machine 1 0 plus 4 its time out will be 4 and now only on machine 2 we can start the work so first unit the timing on machine 2 becomes 4 and this 4 hours was a, a, is the idle time of machine 2 because machine 2 has to wait when machine has to wait there is idle time when job or unit has to wait there is no idle time this is a very important rule to determine the idle time only if machine was waiting then there was idle time yes now second unit will be started after 4 hours 4 plus 4 its time out will be 8 yes so 4 plus 6 the time out was 10 now in this case unit has to wait because machine 2 is still busy with unit number 1 and machine 1 has released unit number 2 so unit number 2 is waiting and since the unit is waiting job is waiting there is no idle time ok and now when the turn of unit 2 will come 8 or 10 whichever is later because after 10 hours only machine 2 will be ready to accept unit number 2 10 plus 6 16 D has 5 units unit number 3 its time in on machine 1 8 8 plus 4 time out on machine 2 12 at this point of time, C, machine 2 is busy with previous unit, so this unit has to wait, unit or job has to wait, no idle time. 12 or 16, whichever is later, will become time in. 16 plus 6, 22. Fourth unit on machine 1 will be started after 12 hours. 12 plus 6, after 16 hours, it will be completed. At the end of 16 hours, C, Machine 2 is busy on processing unit number 3. So unit 4 has to wait. Unit has to wait. No idle time. And the timing will be 16 or 22 whichever is later. 22 plus 6, 28. It's a time out. Fifth, the last unit of job D. Timing 16, 16 plus 6. Time out 22. No. I had made a mistake here it should be 4 so it will be 20 how did I come to know about my mistake 5 into 4 it should be total 20 hours you too I suggest you also Try to do this thing when you are writing in your notebook or in your answer sheet. Of course, for everybody it is not possible, but you can say, create a habit of this kind of in between assessments or checking. It's okay. 20 or 28, whichever is later, 28. 28 plus 6, 34. Okay, now you need a rather job D is over. Okay, now what? <coughs> Second turn is A. A, first unit. Will be started after 20 hours. 
20 plus. Now in job A there are three units and on machine one each unit requires processing time of six. So 20 plus six, 26. But at this point of time machine M2 is busy with other units of the previous job. So the unit has to wait and unit has to wait no idle time. 26 or 34 whichever is later will become time in for this unit. 34 plus 9. 43. Now second unit of A. 26 will be the time in. 26 plus 6. 32. 32 or 43. Whichever is later. 43. Plus 9. 52. What about idle time? There is no idle time because unit or job was waiting, not the machine. And the third and final unit of A on machine A, its timing is 32, 32 plus 6, 38. Again, the unit has to wait, there will be no idle time. 38 or 52, whichever is later, is timing 52 plus 9, 61, its time out. 3 units that means job A is over. Now it is turn of C. And in C we are going to manufacture 2 units. First unit time in 38. 38 plus C. 1 unit requires 7. 45. 45. Again the case is unit or job is waiting and not the machine. No idle time. 45 or 61 whichever is later becomes. Time in 61 plus 12, 73. Second unit, one machine one, time in 45, 45 plus 7, it's time out on machine 152. But at this point of time, machine 2 is busy with these two previous units. So, unit has to wait and therefore no idle time, 52 or 73, whichever is later becomes time in 73 plus 12, 85. C, only two units of C is over. Now it is turn of F. Job F, three units. Okay. Three units. Unit number one, time in 52, 52 plus 7 hours, 59. Same scenario, unit is waiting and not the job, uh, machine, so no idle time. 59 or 85, whichever is later, 85 becomes time in. 85 plus, it is job F, 15, 100. Second unit of F, on machine 1, time in 59, 59 plus 7, 66, okay. 66. The same scenario, unit or job is waiting and not the machine, so no idle time. 66 or 100, whichever is later, so 100 becomes time in. 100 plus 15, time out is 115. Third unit of F, time in on machine 1, 66. 66 plus 7, 73. Again the case, machine is not waiting, but the unit is waiting, so there is no idle time. 73 or 115, whichever is later becomes time in 115. 115 plus 15 hours required, 130 will be its time out on machine 2. But F is over, 3 units. And now this is turn of E. E, 2 units. First unit of E, time in on machine 1, 73. 10 hours. Processing time required for each unit on machine 1. 73 plus 10. <coughs> 83. Same scenario. Unit is waiting, not the machine, so no idle time. 83 or 130, whichever is earlier. So 130 becomes the time in. 130 plus 9. 130. 9. Second unit of E time in on machine 1 83, 83 plus 10 93. Again same scenario, unit or job is waiting and not the machine, so no idle time. 
93 or 139, whichever is later, 139 becomes the time in 139 plus 9, 148 will be its time out. He has only two units, so he is also over. Now the last turn of B, B has four units. B, first unit, time in 93. Okay, 93 plus processing time is very high on machine 1, 17, 100, 10. At this point of time, machine B is busy, so machine is not waiting, so no idle time. 110 on 148, whichever is later becomes the time in 148. 148 plus, what is the processing time? It is 8. 156. Second unit, time in will be 110, 110 plus 17, <coughs> 127, 127, okay, now the same scenario is there, at this point of time, machine 2 is busy, so for machine 2, I mean machine 2 is not waiting, so no idle time for machine 2. 127 or 156 whichever is later so 156 will become the time in 156 plus 8 164 okay now third unit because B has four units time in 127 127 plus 17 144 so again the same scenario, machine is not waiting because machine is busy in uh, processing the previous unit. So the unit or job is waiting and no idle time for machine 2. 144 or 164 whichever is later 164 becomes the timing. 164 plus 8, 172. Okay, now what? Fourth and last unit on machine 1, the time in will be 144. 144 plus 17, 161. Job B is also over on machine 1. But on machine 2, what is the scenario? Machine 2 is not available or machine 2 is busy at this point of time. So again the scenario is same. Unit or job is waiting and not the machine. So no idle time for machine. 161 or 172 whichever is later 172 becomes the time in for last unit 172 plus 8 180 that is the total time elapsed to complete all the six jobs yes 161 is total time elapsed on machine one only now 3 into 6, 18, plus 4 into 17, 68, plus 2 into 7, 14, plus 5 into 4, 20, plus 2 into 10, 20, plus 3 into 7, 21. The total comes to 161. 161 total processing time on machine A. So, our workings on machine A are, correct? Machine B, we have taken utmost care on selecting the time in and adding processing time and arriving at time out. So we are sure on machine 2 also we have written everything correctly. The last point is minimum total time elapsed. This is one kind of final answer. It is 180 hours. Uh, idle time Machine M1, it will be 180 minus 161 equals to 19 hours. Yes, mind well, except the last machine, for all the previous machines, the idle time, rather total idle time can be calculated through this formula. Final total time elapsed minus total time elapsed on the particular machine. The difference is total idle time of that machine. These 19 hours actually after 161st hour to 180 hours. In reality, this cannot be in this way, but in these kind of case studies, we the teachers and authors calculate the 
idle time in this way because in real life till we complete all these six jobs we can have other jobs job orders against us so we can continue the working but in this kind of imaginary case studies we calculate the idle time of all the machines but not the last in this way in case of the last machine the idle time is found as the grand total of the column of idle time which is 4 here so idle time for machine M2 is 4 hours That's it. Thank you very much.